In the year 2025, the digital landscape of South Korea was irrevocably altered. A massive data breach struck SK Telecom, the nation's largest telecom provider. This attack sent shockwaves throughout South Korea and beyond, exposing the vulnerability of even the most seemingly secure systems. The breach affected a staggering 29 million customers, almost half of South Korea's population. This incident quickly escalated into a national crisis, shaking the very foundation of trust in digital infrastructure. This wasn't just a random act of cyber vandalism. It was a calculated assault on the nation's digital heart. The attackers targeted the core of SKT's infrastructure, aiming to steal as much sensitive information as possible. The SKT hacking disaster highlighted the growing threat of state-sponsored cyber warfare and its potential to disrupt entire nations. The attack served as a stark reminder that in our increasingly interconnected world, no one is immune to the threat of cybercrime. The hackers didn't just gain access to user accounts. They plundered a treasure trove of highly sensitive information. Names, addresses and phone numbers were just the tip of the iceberg. The attackers also compromised international mobile subscriber identity numbers, the unique identifiers of every SIM card. This data breach went beyond the usual credit card numbers and passwords. It exposed the very keys to people's digital lives. Imagine the chaos of having your digital identity stolen. The hackers stole SIM authentication keys, allowing them to potentially clone SIM cards and impersonate users. This meant they could intercept text messages, including those used for two-factor authentication, giving them access to bank accounts, social media, and other sensitive online services. The ramifications of this data breach were far-reaching, potentially impacting millions of South Koreans and eroding trust in digital communication and transactions. While data breaches are unfortunately not uncommon in our digital age, the SKT attack stood apart for its sheer scale and audacity. Never before had a single cyber attack in South Korea compromised the data of so many citizens. This was not just a data breach. It was a major cybersecurity failure, exposing the vulnerabilities of a nation heavily reliant on digital infrastructure the attack on SKT was a stark reminder that cyber warfare is no longer a distant threat, but a present danger with tangible consequences. It underscored the need for governments and corporations to bolster their cyber defenses and adapt to the evolving tactics of cyber criminals. The incident served as a wake-up call, prompting a global conversation about cybersecurity, preparedness, and the urgent need for international cooperation in combating cybercrime. At the heart of this attack lies the compromise of SIM authentication keys. These keys, stored on SIM cards, are crucial for verifying a user's identity to the mobile network. With these keys in their possession, the attackers could potentially create cloned SIM cards, effectively taking over a victim's phone number. Imagine receiving a text message that appears to be from your bank, asking you to verify a transaction. You, unaware that your SIM card has been cloned, unwittingly hand over your login credentials to the attackers. This is just one example of how the compromised SIM authentication keys could be used to devastating effect, enabling the attackers to bypass security measures and gain access to sensitive accounts. BPF door. The ghost in the machine. The attackers employed a sophisticated piece of malware known as BPF door to infiltrate SKT's systems. BPF door is a type of backdoor that hides within the Linux kernel, the core of the operating system. It acts as a silent observer, monitoring network traffic for specific trigger packets sent by the attackers. Once activated, BPF door opens a backdoor granting the attackers unfettered access to the compromised system. 
What makes BPF door particularly dangerous is its stealth. Traditional security tools often overlook it because it operates at a very low level, blending in with legitimate system processes. It's like planting a listening device within the walls of a house. It's practically invisible unless you know exactly what to look for. Section 6. A Burglar's Master Key. Understanding the depth of the breach. To grasp the severity of this attack, imagine a burglar obtaining a master key that unlocks every door in a city. That's essentially what the attackers achieved by compromising the SIM authentication keys. They could potentially gain access to any account protected by two-factor authentication, relying on SMS verification. This breach wasn't just about stealing data. It was about undermining the very foundation of trust in our digital systems. When something as fundamental as your phone number can be hijacked, it casts a long shadow of doubt on the security of online transactions, communications, and even our identities. Section 7. Whispers from the East. Evidence points to China. While attributing cyber attacks with absolute certainty is notoriously difficult, a trail of digital breadcrumbs pointed towards China's involvement in the SKT hack. The use of BPF door itself raised red flags, as this malware has been linked to Chinese APT groups, specifically Red Mention, known for their espionage activities. Further solidifying suspicions, the command and control servers used in the attack were traced back to Chinese IP addresses. Additionally, code patterns within the malware bore striking similarities to previous attacks attributed to China's PLA Unit 61398, a military unit notorious for its cyber espionage campaigns. Section 8. Ripple Effects The Devastating Aftermath of the SKT Hack The SKT Hack sent shockwaves throughout South Korea and beyond, with consequences that extended far beyond the immediate victims. In the short term, millions of SKT customers faced an increased risk of SIM swap fraud, phishing attacks and identity theft. The breach forced SKT to scramble, issuing millions of new SIM cards and urging customers to change their passwords. The long-term repercussions, however, were potentially even more profound. The attack eroded trust in mobile number authentication, a cornerstone of online security for countless services. It highlighted the urgent need for more secure authentication methods, such as quantum encryption or decentralized identity systems, to restore confidence in the digital realm. Section 9. A wake-up call. Navigating the treacherous waters of the digital age. The SKT hacking disaster serves as a stark reminder that we live in a world where the digital and physical are inextricably intertwined. As we increasingly rely on technology for communication, finance, and even essential services, we must also be acutely aware of the risks that come with this dependence. This incident is a wake-up call, urging us to become more vigilant and proactive in protecting our digital lives. It compels us to demand greater accountability from corporations and governments in safeguarding our data. Ultimately, the SKT hack is not just a story about a data breach. It is a story about the importance of understanding technology, the risks it brings, and our shared responsibility in navigating the treacherous waters of the digital age.